To work with the sprite sheets that we have made using Texture Packer as well as Texture Packer uh, free version online, we have to load the documents. Now, if we look at the sprite sheet that was made by the free one online, even though I entered the names, again, we can see they did not capture all of the information. So by redoing it, by renaming the image files before putting them into the texture packer online that allows me to capture the data correctly. Now if I look at what was produced by uh, the licensed version, it now shows me that we have the file name based on the folder. We have to pay attention that there's going to be this uh, back, or not, um, backslash right there, so skeleton markdown backslash 01, but notice there's no .png on it because in the paid version we're able to eliminate that suffix from it and we can specify use that folder name, where in the unpaid one we have to put those names on the images before we bring them in and it's going to have that suffix. Now that's not a big deal, but when it comes time for adding them into our scene. So what, then, you know, it, it can, you know, play into it. So with this, I'm going to add it in. So we're going to just add the skeleton directly to our scene first, and we will add both the skeleton from the licensed texture packer as well as the free online version, and we'll see how the code differs a little bit between those so that as you develop your project, you can decide how you want to progress with it. So what we do is we load an atlas with it. So this is different. We're not loading a sprite sheet. We're loading an atlas because we're going to be specifying whether we, or not whether, we're going to be specifying both the graphic file and the JSON file here. So I need to give this a name. And I will just, right now, I'm going to refer to this as my... Um, so my offline will be the one that I used for um, the licensed version. So it's a downloaded app on my computer. And then the graphic file for that is going to be in my assets folder. And it is skeleton.png. And then the JSON for it is in that same folder. So it is assets. And it is skeleton.json. So that now loads it, and we're going to then load the online version here as well. So we have online, but this online version is not going to be skeleton, but instead this is going to be my sprite sheet. Oh, sorry, all lowercase, and it's v2. Though I believe the PNGs for both are going to be the same as you know V1 and V2 for sprite sheet. And then this will be V2, and that really matters for the JSON. Because if we grab just this plain sprite sheet JSON, it's not going to work because we have 0, 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So it becomes very difficult to figure out which frame we're referring to when the names are all the same. So that doesn't work for us. So we really don't want to use that one. So I'm just going to close that because we know we're not going to use it any longer. So we have the online and offline ask, uh, atlas that we're working with. So going down into my create, this is going to be my, uh, my temp So I'm going to load my skeletons here. And what I want to do is I want to generate the animations for this. So to generate these animations, because I've loaded the atlas, so I could add the sprite to the screen and refer to the atlas. Well, actually, we'll just do that right now first. So I can this dot add dot sprite. And we'll put one at 280 and 200. And I'm going to load my online one, or we'll do the offline one first. So we're maintaining the same 
kind of sequence that we have here. So we have offline and online. Or we will be changing the names on those to better reference what they are when we uh, go back and start building our enemy class and load this. But for right now, this is going to uh, give us a good starting point. So if we save it, let's see, we get some error messages pulling up here and it did not uh, find um, these. Oh, okay, so we can see it tried to load something there, but it failed. So it can't find skeleton. PNG and it can't find sprite sheet v2. So that would tell me we have some issues. So so inside my assets, oh, let's put some slashes here so we can actually find it. Now let's save. And now one is, so it did not find assets. Oh, because it's skeleton, not skeleton. Save it again. Okay, good. And there we can see it loaded one of the frames of that skeleton. So it loaded the very first sprite in the sprite sheet of that. Because if I look at the skeleton right here, and we zoom in so we can see that it's loading that frame. All right, so we've proven that we were able to load it and we can grab an element of that atlas. What I really want to do is I want to load an animation and then tell that animation to play. So with that, we will just create an animation here, same way as we had the player animations in our project prior, but this time uh, we'll make the skeleton animation, and then when we build our enemy class, which will extend entity, that enemy class will be very much like the player class, but it's going to load the animations that it needs. So I can say this dot anims dot create, and then now we get to put all of the fun stuff inside here. So we give it a key, and this is going to be. Um, this will be my offline, so dp off left. We're just going to create the left animation right now. And the frames will be this dot anims dot generate frame names. And then we specify which atlas. So it's tp offline. And well, it's get our punctuation correct there. Now we throw in some curly braces. Now we specify information about this atlas that we're working with. And it will be skeleton walk left. And remember we have to do the slash as part of it because if I look at the skeleton JSON, so, so right now that's down but left would be the same. Let's see, where's left? Here we go. Here's left skeleton walk left. And we have one, two, and three for the frames that we are working with. So skeleton walk left. So if I go back here, that gives me the, whoa, wait, what? No, I didn't run my settings there. Let's try again, comma. Now we have our suffix. Now the suffix in this case is empty because we said, no, we don't really need to load a suffix. Now, when we do the online version where it has the .png in the suffix, we'll put that in. So right now I'm just leaving that there so we can repeat this code. And we're going to start our frame numbering at one, because remember it's skeleton one, skeleton two, skeleton three. And we will end at three, and then zero pad is our next parameter. And what that means is how many spaces occur after the period or after whatever punctuation before we move to the number. So in this case, it's two. Because say we had 16 frames or even 10 frames for our animation, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Well, 10 is two characters long. One is one. So we can't get this auto numbering that we want if we don't properly zero pad things because when 
software generates the frames, it's going to be 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 9, 0, or not 0, 10, but then 10. That would be with a zero pad of 2. If we had, say, 100 frames or 1,000 frames that we're potentially cycling through, then we would start zero pad three or zero pad four because how many zero or how many numbers we want that to be. So if it was zero, zero, three, that would be zero pad of three. And if it zero, 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 three, then that'd be zero pad of four because there are now uh, four characters there. Now I have to make sure I get this back to what it's supposed to be, which is zero, two. Now, when I go over here, there's our zero pad. And next, what I want to do is set a frame rate. And just like the player, we'll probably set a variable for it so we don't have to repeat it in that way. If we decide that it's playing too fast or too slow, we can adjust it a little bit easier. And I want this to be a repeating cycle, so I put negative one in as my parameter. So this allows me to um, create what I want, and now what I can simply say is, well, not comma there, period, anims play, and now I specify the one I want, and this will be tp off left. And now let's save this and see, no error messages, that's good. And if I look here, there he is, looks like he's trying to run, but he has no velocity, so he is parked. The cool part about this is if I were to just simply change this to right, or if I made a second one as right and put it in there, if we did that, we'll see, now, hey, look, he's going to the right. So it shows how we're able to get the information out of it. Save it for up. Yep, up's working there. So we could make all four um, things, and we will make all four when we do our enemy class. But right now, we're just doing this as our proof of concept as we figure out the differences between using the downloadable version versus the in-browser version of Texture Packer. So we'll go back to left. There it is. Okay, good. So I want to repeat this once more and this time we're going to change it a little bit and we will have a suffix and it will be .png we're going to use the Texture Packer online version for it. And let's change this to online right there. And it, instead of having the slash, we have a dash because we didn't go from folders. But if we look at the JSON name in Sprite Sheet, we see it, we have walk down zero two. Okay, we just have walk. Notice it does not say skeleton, enemy, or anything else. So that means we need to get rid of that. I'm going to change this one and make this right. And I'll make this right because I'm just going to load both of these guys so they are looking at each other. So when I put it in, it will be going there. Again, it's the same numbering because it's three frames. Zero padding is two because we have the zero, one, zero, two. Uh, I'm going to change this frame rate so they're moving at slightly different rates so we can see the difference going there. And now I can do this dot add sprite. And now I'll put this one at, actually let's go 260. So, um, or wait, left one is at 280. So let's put this one at 300. Oh, no, we, we do want 260. Left one is going to be over there on the same height. And this will be from TP online. So that adds our uh, sprite there. And then we can just simply say anoms play. And this time, whoop, tp on right. So that plays it to the right. Save it. No error message is good. We have two guys. And you can see how the one facing to the right is going a little bit slower than the one going to the left. And I'm going to make the left one go even faster so it becomes that much more apparent how frame rate affects it. So you can see the one facing left is motoring, the one facing right is going at a much slower clip as part of it, which is pretty cool the way then that is working.
Now I'm also going to just put a little set tint on here just to modify this particular um, one. So we can use 0x and then 9999 ff and then when we do that and save we'll see that it makes him a little bit more blue than the other one so we can see the difference between the two. We can also see how that one is running much slower. So we've discovered how we can work with using both versions of Texture Packer to generate JSON to create our uh, sprite sheets, how to load those sprite sheets as atlases, and then how to generate our different animations as we work with it. So in the next tutorial, we're going to use this knowledge to then build a fully functioning enemy class.